It's nearly time for the Zwift Academy Finals 2022. But ahead of this year's competition, we wanted to find out how last year's winners, Maud Alderman and Alex Bonya, have fared in their first years as professional cyclists. Have they adapted from racing on Zwift to racing on the road as pros? Have they impressed their new teams? Does Alex still have a mullet? All will be revealed, but first, let's hear from Maud. Maud, yeah. I brought you back to the Zwift Arena one year on. Yeah. What's it like? Have you got painful memories here or good memories? Oh yeah, it's really good to be back here. Um, and I think the memories that I have are more, yeah, more great. Yeah, God. So talk me through the aftermath of the Zwift Academy. So you found out you this life-changing thing, and then yeah. you flew home. And what happened? Um, so I went back home and I had one week of off-season because I didn't have an off-season before Swift Academy. Um, and I had some things planned for the week, but I cancelled all my plans because I was so tired from, I think just from all the impressions and the challenges and just, yeah, the whole environment. We had to keep it silent for one month, obviously. And yeah. I started to realize what was happened and uh, that I would become a pro, but then the series came online and then I was like, whoa, what happened? Like, this is crazy. And then I think at the end of December, I kind of realized. So it took me one and a half months to, yeah. to really feel that I would become pro, yeah. And what did it feel like when you turned up to the first training camp with the team? Oh yeah, that was great. Um, I think today we have a four, four hour ride. We have some strength efforts, so yeah, we'll be good. Yeah, I was a bit nervous to meet everyone, um, but yeah, already the first day, everyone made me feel really welcome. And also I didn't really feel at one point like the Swift Academy winner, like I was a real yeah part of the team. So really special. And yeah, it was just great to be in that environment. Yeah. And what's the learning curve been like? Have you found that, you know, even at that first training camp, you were just constantly picking things up from yeah. the other riders? Yeah, and like in the first two months, without any races, I learned so many new things on the bike. Like technical things, like descending or cornering, or riding the group or echelons, because yeah, these riders are at the top level, so they know how to do it. And during the yeah, training, I got a lot of tips from them but also like off the bike, so recovery or do some core work or yeah, some exercise before the training. I, I never really yeah. <laughs> have done that. So yeah, I feel like I've learned a lot already in the first two months. Yeah, and what about the first race? What was that like? Oh yeah, my first race I did was in Belgium. Okay, so we're now outside at the mechanic park and the bikes are getting ready because tomorrow it's race day. You didn't feel it? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> And it was actually the biggest um, start yeah, list I had raced for the whole year. Oh, so wow. for the first one, it was quite an experience. Can you think what the first moment where you, you really understood it and you're like, okay, I know what's coming next. I know where to be. Like, Yeah, I really remember, remember that moment. Uh, it was in the race in Luxembourg. I did a stage race with the team, Els Jacobs. Um, and before that, I had only raced in uh, the Netherlands and Belgium. So it's really hectic and there's just a lot happening and it's flat. Yeah. And this was my first race with actually some, some hills. Um, and I think the course also suited me. Uh, and, and I was in the front of the peloton uh, riding with the team and everyone over the radio was like, okay, this is going good. And I really felt a lot of support that I, that I was there and could do, uh, could do my job. Okay, so this is our team fan. Here is how it looks and yeah, tomorrow we will just get ready here for the race and have our last preparation with the team. And uh, when you were at the Zwift Academy last year, yeah. It felt like we didn't manage to expose any weaknesses in your <laughs> riding ability. You were, yeah. you were good across the board. Yeah. Since then, have you started to work out where your strengths lie in cycling? Yeah, I think my strengths um, and maybe yeah, also like last year's Swift Academy is really to go full gas every day. So um, the one day races were also really nice for the experience, but I feel like stage races are more my kind of thing. So on the last day, I can still yeah, push the same kind of watts and the same energy on the first day, so I think that's my strength. Yeah. yeah. 
What do you think your future looks like now in cycling? You're obviously still really young, going into yeah. your second season as a professional cyclist. Have you, have you got races that you now dream of winning? What does your perfect career look like, do you think? Well, if I have a dream, like what I really want to win is races like Tour de France or Giro. Uh, I feel like this year I really enjoyed the stage racing, just the environment and go every day and what you learn from the day before you can take into to the day after. So I feel like I want to yeah, develop myself more in the stage races and also one day races to get the experience there to use in the, in the stage racing, yeah. Mate, uh, he'd really struggle to find a bike if he ever, if he ever lost one. He'd struggle to find a new one, eh? <laughs> Alex Bonnier was the winner of the Men's Academy in 2021. He's currently back home in the Gold Coast in Australia, but before we hear from the man himself, let's find out how pro team judge Christoph de Kegel actually thinks he's done. Christoph. Head of performance at Alps de Kerning and also one of the two Alps de Kerning judges at the Zwift Academy. So it was part of your call to choose Alex. How has he got on over the last year? Well, he did, uh, he did well, uh, actually, from, uh, from a team perspective. We were uh, happy about, um, yeah, let's say, his development as a rider. We were aware when we took the decision um, to let Alex win last year uh, that he was still yeah, a raw diamond. He was 19 years old. You got my team guys and just nice uh, hanging there. Now along with Eddie Mertz and um, now we got way out in the back here. Yeah, a pretty cool little cafe. Uh, we knew that he had the numbers. His numbers were the best. He also showed in the last day last year that he could handle the stress and that he, he went out full. He, he was still there at day five with only 19 years old. So his resistance to fatigue very well. Um, but for sure, it was not, um, not an easy decision. We knew that we would still um, had to continue in a complete process uh, with the athlete, uh, Alex. New kit day, so sick. <laughs> mate, you're gonna look so blank. I'm, not, I'm just gonna look the part, mate. That's about it. For you, I guess then that, you know, Swift Academy didn't finish on results night last year. It's a, it's a longer process for Alves Yeah, Academy. for sure. I think that's one of the main reasons why we, um, with the team, our partner of this uh, project, we always pick a winner and then we say, okay, listen, this is not the end of it. This is just the start of it. You, 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 you join our team project and we continue for a few years to see what's the maximum that we can get out of, uh, out of a certain rider. Yeah, for sure. A couple of years down the line, you get well to stage wins. Well, uh, in the end, that's what, what we aim for. Are we a pick up, pick down person? You gotta have the peak going this way at the moment. Cause then you can fly, you know, show it off a bit. Alex, it is great to see you, man. How are you doing? Yeah, going all right. Just had a uh, bit of an off season and now I'm um, into a preparation phase and ready for, for next year and stuff. Right, let's, let's talk about last year, shall we? First of all, how would you rate your first year as a professional cyclist out of 10? How did it go? I'd say pretty average year. I'd say bang on five, I'd say, out of 10. The learning curve was like steep as, mate, steep as. Yeah, all right, we'll, let, we'll unpack that in a bit. First of all, take us back to the Academy Finals last year. There was quite, there was quite an after party, it wasn't there a rap party. So you started life as a pro with a splitting hangover. <laughs> Yeah, but, that's right. But what um, what happened after that? Because because Alperson flew you straight to Belgium, right? Yeah, I went straight to Belgium, and then um, yeah, it was actually a really cool trip. First time, well, yeah, straight into a different country in Belgium, and got to see like the service course, basically where they're based, um, where basically the team started from, and yeah, it was actually quite amazing. Got a, like all my kit fitted, all my bike fitted, and then uh, yeah, got to see all the new stuff for the next for the uh, for this year and stuff and it was yeah great to meet all the staff and um 
yeah, everything that goes on behind Alberson and stuff, it was good to see all, all like the kind of the background stuff. So yeah, new team, um, and they all speak Dutch. We're on Duolingo this morning. We're gonna hopefully get to the end of it. Complete Duolingo this morning. Yeah. Oh, mate, it's happening. <laughs> and t talk us through then about where you've been living. So what? Are you based in Girona during the season? Is that right? Yeah, I'm in the uh, cycling hub of Girona. It really is one of the probably the best places to live as a professional rider. And what was it like moving out of home? And suddenly, like having to look after yourself. <laughs> oh, mate, my parents were in shock. Like, my dad, I have to live out of home. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I have, where are you living? I'm like, oh, uh, in Spain, I think, in Girona. He's like, what? Where's that? And he was like, absolutely blown away. He's like, mate. How's that possible? You just like you got you're gonna live overseas. He's paying for everything. I'm like, I think I'm getting of age. So yeah, it was kind of a big shock, especially to my parents. So um, that was quite interesting. Pretty fresh today. Got some fresh kit going on. It's pretty sick. Pretty drip, you know. I'd say. I think you started the year with a bit of an injury. Is that right? So you didn't get going until mid-season. So after the finals and after Belgium, I flew back to uh, to Sydney. And I just got an injury, I picked it up. I did probably a bit too much too early, it was too keen. And then between all the long haul travel and stuff, I picked up like some um, the injury to do with like the patella not tracking correctly. And it took me a while to try and fix it actually. Um, I really tried to fix it here in Australia, but um, it really just took one week in the, the January training camp to, to fix it. So as soon as I went to the training camp in January, within one week, um, it was all fixed. So that was actually quite nice. And actually with my contract, because um, it was so late in the season and stuff, I couldn't quite race in the six months, the first six months of the year. And I, so I had to do, yeah, I could, I could start racing once the transfer period opened. So I had, yeah, the last half of the season to race with the team, which is actually maybe a blessing in disguise so I could actually uh, prepare a bit more. Um, just a couple of last questions then. What's been your highlight of the year? Actually my second race in Europe. <laughs> Yeah, it was Tour of Slovenia, and um, on one of the stages, I started riding in the front as directed, and then through this um, quite hilly section, uh, Poggy and Mahoritz just attacked, and I just like tried to follow them, and mate, I went so deep, just on one climb, just to hang on, and like, for those five minutes, I was like living my best life, I was like, oh my god, I'm actually following these guys, and then like, the next climb, I got absolutely demolished. Like, mate, I was like out the back straight away. And I reckon I closed the gap behind me one minute and 10 seconds. I, I legit had the, re had a, the reverse gear on. And the rest of the day, I reckon I gave myself asthma that day because I couldn't breathe at all. It was mental. So that was definitely like a highlight, I could say. Um, before you go, can you just turn to the side? Is the mullet gone? Yeah, mate, mullet's gone. I went to a... I went to a local barber and I was like, mate, just like cut a little bit off. It's getting a bit hot, you know? And he just, it must've got lost in translation cause he just like started shearing the whole thing off. I'm like, oh, well then that's gone, isn't it? Like, Has it affected your power output? Oh, hundred percent, mate. And morale, morale's like totally dropped off the cliff without my bullet. <laughs> it's yeah, terrible. Cool, man. I look forward to seeing, uh, seeing how your results pan out next year. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, for sure. Thanks, Simon. Uh, thanks for the call and all that. Hey, really appreciate it. So, two super talented young riders well on their way to successful professional cycling careers. But who will be joining them? You don't have long to wait until the Zwift Academy Finals 2022 will be live on GCN. So make sure you subscribe so that you do not miss the first episode coming soon.